Hi, this is Eric Stromquist. Welcome to episode 122 of Control Talk Now, the Smart Buildings video cast and podcast. Back in town after seven nights on the road. Lots to talk about on this episode. But before we get started, I thought I'd show you a problem that's cost billions of dollars a year, a problem Ken Myers calls light litter. So I'm out here at a public park, and as you can see up here, it's a beautiful day, and the lights are on. Uh, my experience has been usually the government folks just leave the lights on because we're paying the taxes on it anyway. But it's a billion dollar a year problem according to Ken Smyers and uh, be easy to fix. Private sector tends to not have as much light litter but uh, with the government I guess because like I say we're paying taxes um, they can afford it. So sit back relax and enjoy the show. Episode 201, that's right, folks, 201 for the week ending, October 16th, 2016. My name is Eric Stromquist, and we talk about all things smart building, smart building controls, smart building manufacturers, smart building people, and even people like Roger Rebenak, one of the hardest working, smartest guys in the industry. But when you start talking about great people, you have to start with my coach, the man, the myth, the legend. The well-traveled, the well-read, the well-heeled, Kenny Smyers, the control man from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Kenny, welcome to the show, Big Dog. Well, thank you very much, Eric. Uh, I was pretty good uh, run there. You had, uh, you know, well-traveled, well-read, well, well-heeled. I, I am well-heeled, and uh, thank you for remembering. Uh, yeah, we've been doing well-traveled. Uh, that, that is something that we'll have to just get right into because uh, there has been a maelstrom of in- industry events that have just been uh, can't remember uh, having this kind of a sequence uh, getting with the controls group North America meeting in Chicago all the way to just getting back from the Siemens uh, national sales meeting in between we had the Johnson Control CBC and the KMC Genius uh, webinar what was it the Genius Conference? That's pretty cool. Genius Conference. I, I, I didn't make it there because I'm not a genius, and uh, but you did, so you could tell me all about it. Well, they almost didn't let me in, man, because you almost had to have an IQ <laughs> test to be able to get into that thing, Kenny. But I tell you what, you're right, man. It was like uh, one conference after another. I think I was out seven nights. You were out, and then came back, and then went back out again. And uh, I tell you, man, conferences. You know, the thing about those things is that uh, you know we never have time for them, right? I mean, they're always uh, sort of tough to get to, but tell you what man they pay huge huge dividends and i tell you what the three we went to did not disappoint and uh, i tell you what before we start breaking the conferences down though kenny Smyers, let's talk a bit about our sponsors this week uh, uh as you know the control trends awards are coming up in uh is it february right or the end of january first part of february uh, in conjunction with ahr so if you're going to that show that Sunday night, you got to make Control Trends your first stop. The Control Trends January Awards. January 29th, yes, yes, yes. The Sunday before, January 29th, Eric, 6.30 to 9.30 at the Hard Rock Cafe. Very, very cool, Kenny. Very, very cool. But, uh, so, you know, Kenny, we're, we're, we're getting down to uh, the nomination period, which we'll talk about in a minute. But the main thing is, if you're a platinum sponsor, the only way these awards take place is through sponsors. So we want to show our sponsors a lot of love. Because, you know, Kenny, a lot of these companies, man, they just realize that it's really good for the industry. Uh, you know, we think it's a great marketing investment, too, but uh, but they step up to the plate. Guys like Eugene Mazzo from DG Logic, Mike Marson from EZIO, those guys, uh, the one award ceremony ends and they go, hey, we're in for the next year. So it's guys like that allow us to, to do this, but it is our Hollywood event, we like to call it. We really turn the bright lights on to and the cameras on to the greats in our industry. And... Um, I tell you what, Kenny, uh, we got two sponsors this week. So, you know, part of that is that we, we, we try to acknowledge our sponsors uh, on each one of these shows as sponsors. And our sponsors this week, our first one is the Big Red H Honeywell. And, uh, man, they're doing some great stuff. Kenny, a uh, lot of stuff they got coming down the pipe. Why don't, why don't you give us a little quick, quick take on that? Well, I, I mean, if you're in the control business, uh, you have to know who Honeywell is. You have to have, uh, run across some of the extraordinary product platforms that they have. But, you know, they're very, very active in the three primary markets, which are the commercial markets. Uh, so I'm on a support and resource center there for customer at Honeywell.com. It is a plethora of information and uh, knowledge. But, uh, yeah, so Honeywell caters to three the commercial uh, market, the industrial market, and the residential market, with one of the largest uh, product offerings uh, in the world. But uh, this this time we're talking about the Honeywell 
uh, upgrades to the webs. Uh, the webs of four dot two is is, uh, is going to be available soon. It's going to have the Niagara Analytics two dot which features all the functions and uh, features of the product uh, and 25 analytic points. Uh, the integrated release allows for real-time business intelligence, which enables users to make smarter, swifter decisions, leading to less waste and expense. So uh, I, I think Honeywell's really happy to uh, to be flush with the, the latest innovations in the integration platform where you've got everything embedded. You've got your graphics, you've got your analytics, and uh, your uh, ability to really uh, save big time on – uh, you know, the stuff that makes it important. So knowledge, uh, data is so available, so readily available, you get tripped up on it. But when you can bring that down into uh, actual data, and this is what this analytic product will do, uh, then you're really going to start making headways and, and realize those savings and efficiencies that you're, you're out to get. Well, I'll tell you what, Kenny, and, and the one thing that we have been, uh, you know, just been in, inundated with uh, is, is, you know, using data to, uh, to make buildings more productive, uh, we've talked ad nauseum about the three thirty three hundred dollar rule, which is absolutely is critical that you have good analytics to take advantage of the I/O, the Internet of Things, plus uh, to be able to focus on that three hundred. So the three three hundred dollar three thirty three hundred dollar rule basically is if you have a spend, you're basically spending three dollars on energy, you're spending thirty dollars on equipment in that per square foot, but the people in your space are spending three hundred dollars you're on people and productivity. So if you can get effectuate a 10% change on that 300, you're much better than a 10% change on the energy. So the people that we're talking to, Kenny, uh, it's kind of like uh, energy. Energy is the icing on the cake. It's not the reason they do things. It's really that $300. How can we have our tenants be more productive? How can we have our people be more productive? If we can market our building as being a building that has more productivity out of, out of your employees, you're going to win. And to do that, you have to have a couple of things, the internet of things, you have to have devices, but you got to bring the devices in. You got to do analytics. You got to make sense out of it so that your building can be smarter and more conducive to work. So I think Honeywell is, is right on it with that. And of course, you know, guys like, and by the way, Roger Rebenack, thank you so much again for your, uh, a great intro or congratulatory uh, 200th episode for us last week when we were uh, out in the field. So, Raj, appreciate that. But, you know, Honeywell's got great people. They do the access. They do the security probably better than anybody. Uh, Roger Rebnack and Laura Kevin sort of lead that up. So, great people. Big Red H. I tell you what, Kenny, it's like they're, they're laying a little bit low right now, but I, but I think they got some great stuff in the hopper that's getting ready to, to sort of uh, burst out onto the scene. So, special thanks to Larry Weber, uh, and, and the rest of the team at Honeywell for, for their support of the Control Trends Award. Indeed, Derek. Uh, next up, uh, our next sponsor is the Blue Ridge Technologies. And uh, you know, hats off to Bill Dunkelberger uh, and Rocky because uh, they, they just keep uh, new inroads into the uh, industry. Uh, we see Blue Ridge Technology coming up uh, in specifications now. But what's really cool about these guys is how they go about business. You know, they, the, 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 contract, the contractors are becoming more understanding of how – the Blue Ridge technology, unified control, helps them maximize energy uh, savings and reliability with a familiar protocol back that MSTP. And so what, uh, what unified means is you have one network, one user interface, one point of accountability with wide open integration. So we're seeing this Blue Ridge technology concept really start to take hold as, as people get more and more familiar with it because now they realize that they can go in there and they can modify existing lighting panels and lighting systems and they can in integrate it and unify it into the single workstation using the BACnet protocol. I don't know about you, Kenny, but I want to buy my lighting from a guy who rides a motorcycle and looks like he's from Sun to Anarchy. Uh, our friend, uh, Bill Duckelberger, man, I tell you what, he is one of the coolest guys, uh, I know. I think our friend Jeff Haupt from AI out in Oklahoma city coined the phrase that we're in the integrity economy, which basically means, uh, you know, you're going to be competing against people one day and the next day you're going to be working with them. But what you're really trading off of, I think more, more so now than ever, Kenny is your integrity. I mean, your word is everything. Uh, you have to be nimble. You might be, you know, like you say, you know, well, like, like, like a Smyers family Thanksgiving where maybe, maybe one, you know, before, before the meal, you guys are duking it out, but uh, at the meal, you're sitting down singing Kumbaya together. You have to be that flexible. And, and I think Bill to me epitomizes Kenny, the uh, you know, the integrity economy guy, he's a guy that he says what he means and he means what he says. Uh, if he tells you, you're going to do something, he's going to do it. And this is a guy that started at ALC folks, 
sweeping the warehouse. He worked himself up and became actually the president of ALC. Uh, he's that type of a guy. Uh, and then from there, you know, they had a lighting company that wasn't going well. And Bill says, uh, you know what? I think I can make something happen with that lighting company. So he buys it, renames it Blue Ridge Technologies, and, and the rest is history, as they say. But if you haven't dealt with Bill Duckelberger yet, because, you know, kind of, Kenny, at the end of the day, if you think about it, the, the products, everybody has, you have to have great products to even be in the game, right? You have to have great products. You have to have great service to be in the game. But I tell you what, Bill sort of brings that it factor. I mean, he's a partner. I mean, if Bill tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it. He's somebody you can count on, and I encourage you to check those guys out. And, and special thanks to Bill and Rocky Moore and the rest of the team at Blue Ridge for their sponsorship of the 2016 Control Trends Awards. Right, and just remember that Blue Ridge Technology has a solution for you for retrofits, which we have up on the board here, as well as new uh, installations and new applications. But uh, you need to give Blue Ridge Technology a good look. Their website is www.brtint.com. That's the truth, Kenny Smyers. That's the truth. And, buddy, <laughs> listen, uh, so we celebrated our 200th episode in Nashville, Tennessee. It uh, concurred with the Johnson Controls a business partner conference and, and buddy. Can you see that? They, they just, yeah. Yeah. They just knocked it out of the park. Didn't they? They sure did. Uh, like you said, you know, the efficacy of trade shows and, and, and corporate meetings uh, used to be under question because they were expensive birth in times of uh, money and time, you know, so in terms of time and money, when you go somewhere and in three days, two and a half days, you get a concise, presentation you get to meet the hierarchy of, of uh, johnson for instance we we got to meet and hear uh updates and, and just the past that these people have rick van buren the guy who, who really was in the trenches marketing things uh chris eichmann of course is just uh you know uh, the consummate leader uh corporate leader jenny stens an amazing uh corporate leader uh who tells a story uh, she really brought it across about uh the relationships and how you know she told the background to honeywell she reviewed it and made everybody aware that you know honeywell's two, or sorry johnson's two headquarters now in milwaukee wisconsin and shanghai china uh she reaffirmed johnson's vigorous commitment to the building's business and how she, the Johnson's out to attract partners and play and play to win with specifying features that product, uh, provide for competitive advantages. And just one more aside there, Johnson has 50 factories in North America, 15,000 channel partners, and they expect to drive growth across 200 products across 70 brands with 2,000 products across 70 brands. So, um, again, some of the people that we met and got a chance to talk to and get updates from, Al Anderson, uh, who runs the, techno uh, the uh, technical support, Chris Lane, Greg Wilmer, Russ Carfagna, just a bunch of just great professionals that really have a passion to do, to do things as well as they can. And, and uh, you know, customer satisfaction is paramount. Well, I'll tell you what, Kenny, that, that, that's for sure. And then the other thing is uh, special, special thanks to everybody. I, you know, we go to these conferences now and people like uh, Russ Carfago come up and talk to us and tell us that they watch the show and listen to the show. And, and uh, I tell you what, that, that, I don't know about you, Ken, that means everything to me. But we're meeting so many cool people uh, when we go to these conferences and we're finding out there's so many people that actually tune in to the uh, Smart Buildings podcast and video cast every week. So just can't tell you how much we appreciate that and appreciate you speaking. Met a cool guy from Canada. You can see him on the uh, on on the uh, one of the videos we did. He's got a cool product. Uh, but what we're finding out, Kenny, is there's just a lot of talent, uh, just a lot of talent in our industry and a lot of cool people. I found his uh, card. I got a card for him. That was Christian uh, Tremblay. Uh, he's engineering uh, with services, and he came up with back dash zero back. Zero. It's a it's a program to do pre testing before you take your uh, your stuff out to the job site and start it up. You can do uh, the, all the diagnostics and make sure everything's working and turn it on uh, basically through simulations and uh, you know advanced diagnostics as, as far as how things are going to work and uh, work the bugs out before you go out to your customers and do it there in front of them. Well, I tell you what, Kenny, that, that you know that's that's absolutely cool. But you know, and I think one of the common things for these conferences that that, that we're picking up on, and I mean, it, it, this has been going on for a while. I mean, you know, you have it at a really cool place. You obviously want to talk about your products and what you're doing, but I think, <clears throat> you know, Johnson sort of sets the standard for this and others are following, you know, it's, it's about educating people and making them better business people. So, I mean, that's where you can really justify going to these conferences is that uh, when you get companies like Johnson and KMC and Honeywell and everybody else, when they have really good speakers come in and educate you on your business. So for example, 
In your brain, what do you get when you cross George Carlin, famous comic who has uh, sort of passed away now, but you older guys will probably know George Carlin, one of the funniest guys ever, with Ben Bernanke, the guy who runs the uh, Federal Reserve. You get one of the speakers we had at the Johnson Controls Conference. Alan Ballou, I think is his name. And Kenny, did he just, he blew me away. I tell you what, if, if you're feeling down on the economy or whatever, uh, or feeling bad about the U.S., listen to this guy. When he gets down to just the facts, you really realize that the media is, is a business just like us. They got a quota. We've got to get sales. They've got to get viewers. And they have discovered that the best way to do that is bad news sells. So anything they can slant to make things look awful like the sky is falling, they know that's good for ratings, but that's not good for people like me and you. I mean, if you're like me, your hair will fall out if you think too much about that stuff. So, so, uh, so Kenny, I mean, you know. Well, you they also had Clay Nestor. Remember Clay Nestor? With well, that, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want to get to Clay in a second, but, but cool. let's, get, let, let's get back. Let's talk about what Alan had to say because I think our community would probably really appreciate some of his insights. So, Kenny, fact or fiction? Manufacturing is leaving the U.S. Fiction. Yeah. And the U.S. is the number one manufacturing place on the planet. Fact or fiction, the U.S. is, is a lot more expensive to manufacture here than in China. Fiction, just barely. Just barely. Fact or fiction, if, if you have a business, uh, the most stable place you can go is overseas, and the U.S. is very unstable. Fiction. Every economy is based on the U.S. dollar, or most of them. Yeah. And will continue because there's nothing to replace it. Right. Fact or fiction, the U.S. dollar is getting ready to, to go away as the default currency. That's fiction. It's, yeah. it's going to be, it, it, there's nothing to replace it. Yeah. How did I do so far? I, you're, I think you're, I got, you're, you're doing great, Kenny, but give me your take on this guy. This guy to <laughs> me was just, he lit it up. We'll talk about Clay Nestor in a second, but uh, I came away feeling so encouraged. Uh, <clears throat> you know, that. Well, you know, you say that, and, and as you say it, you, I, I had to interrupt her real quick because you know it's a temporary thing. In other words, the the things go in cycles, uh, and he's he's likening the next in third, 2030, we're going to see something like we had in 1930, or actually. 1928, 29, leading to the, the Great Depression, he said, "Right now we are in a we are in a, a, a momentum swing. The pendulum is swinging in our favor. There's going to be a steady inflation, but we're going to get uh, we are going to have uh, you know compensatory uh, you know uh, compensations in that inflationary period that's going to make investment very good. Right now, money is is inexpensive. It's cheap." Go borrow it, invest it in things that are going to lead to greater dividends. Companies uh, that are, are concerned about what their future looks like, this is a go time. This is a green light time. Now, that's going to change. He, he was saying that he's, he expects that to change in the year 2028 20, uh, to 2029, 20, 30, just almost replicate, replicating the economic depression we had in the 19, uh, early 1900s. Uh, so, uh, but the whole concept was, like you said, he believed that this is probably one of the most opportunistic times to be in business and that, you know, uh, Everything's working in your favor. You've got low interest rates. You've got uh, technology that's dumping into your lap, giving you ideas and opportunities, choices, so you commit to a solution and be very successful selling that solution, providing that solution, living on that solution. So uh, he said, go for it now, guys. Uh, don't wait. Right. And he's got a book, Kenny, that, that he, he has, has got, you know, written, you know, how to profit in the coming depression. So, uh, uh, you know, I talked to Chris Eichmann a little bit about this guy and Chris says they use him at Johnson control says he is right on his, his hit rate is, uh, uh, very, very accurate. And so here's the game plan. Everybody write this down. So what you want to do, you want to borrow money, grow your business, 2029, sell your business to somebody you don't like, take the money, in uh, 2034, start buying back in. Little known fact, there were more millionaires that came out of the Depression than any other time in history. So, I mean, one, one thing we know for sure is if you've got money and you hit a Depression, you can buy things for pennies on the dollar and ride it back out. But uh, uh, interesting guy, Kenny. And then, then, then the, the other guy you were talking about, you know, Johnson's got a smart building, for lack of a better word, an economist, a guy that he, he just watches smart buildings and the trends. And uh, he sort of educated us a little bit, too. What were some of your takeaways from him? Well, Clay Nestor's mission is to save the world for fun and profit. 
Uh, and he described to us a, an incredible life in a day of a future building. But actually, it isn't uh, future yet. It's here right now. So, in fact, what he, he referenced uh, William Gibson, and he said the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. So basically what we see, Eric, is that there is a compilation of technology that in 24 hours gives you and delivers the most available, uh, you know, uh, from battery storage, uh, you know, the, the Moore's law, the, the batteries will soon impact, Moore's law will impact the battery industry, but you're going to see batteries that were, you're going to see people uh, coming to the near zero and net zero uh, terms. Like on a sunny day, the net zero building will put away excess energy uh, on the grid. It'll, it'll actually save it, and then what's left, uh, it, it, the battery capacity is exceeded, put it onto the grid, so you're actually generating uh, power. Uh, interestingly, the, normally policy uh, lags when you try to do something like this. This time, the policy is leading the way. Uh, the ideal locations right now are California, where uh, you know the net zero game can be really enacted and, and delivered because there's not a, a real test on the heating or the cooling. Uh, so there's uh, and there's a lot of roof space where they can take a lot of uh, that building space footprint and put panels up there and really start generating some some uh, considerable uh, power that they store locally. So. What we watched was that during different times of the day, from a.m., you know, 9 o'clock, whatever, uh, starts getting hot. Well, they had, say, you know, the ice storage, the ice storage uh, capacity starts to be utilized and contributes. Uh, they avoid all the peak uh, demand periods. Uh, so basically, it is feasible now to create near zero or net zero buildings with the technology we already have available. But there's headwinds, and the headwinds that still delay up adoption is lack of awareness, lack of expertise, uncertainty of ROI – insufficient ROI and available funding. Uh, he gave an example. U.S. right now, we don't have money, uh, while in India, they have the money, but they have no expertise. Very, very cool. Well, listen, you know, it's interesting you talk about the net zero buildings because at the KMC conference, they had a speaker from California. He's saying it's going to be mandated by 2020 that the homes become net zero homes, which basically means they produce as much energy as they take in. And by 2030, the buildings will be required to do that. And as we know, you know, California's a bellwether state it happens out there and it comes back, travels back east. So what's interesting to me, Kenny, is, is you look at folks like Johnson Controls and KMC and Acuity Brands, and it's like they seem to be bundling for this next big sort of trend, if you will. And, you know, with Johnson Controls, they're the largest battery manufacturer in the world. They understand battery technology. We postulated uh, after talking to Jenny since a couple of months ago that Johnson might be the first company that has a building that's controlled by smart batteries, right? That maybe you got the solar on the roof because now with Tesla and the, the power wall, you can actually store the power and uh, and then and then power the batteries after that. And, and, you know, we sort of jokingly said that Kenny and postulated it. But after talking with. Uh, Listen to Clay Nestor talk. I, I think that's the reality. I think that might be part of their plan. So, uh, so it was interesting stuff there. And I want to make another comment about Johnson, but I do want to, one, one last thing about our economist that our, I think our viewers need to know. Uh, so he was very specific about the need to vote for somebody in particular. So fact or fiction, who should they vote for? Uh, I can't touch that, Eric. I'm no, no. I, remember, I, remember he said it doesn't matter. He said I don't it, remember that. Oh, okay. I tell you what, we we uh, we agreed not to get political. Well, no, no, no. His <laughs> point was, and this is what I, where I was going with that. He says it absolutely does not matter who wins the election. President. Oh, as far as the outcome of the economy. Or for whatever. the economy, yeah, from the yeah, economy yeah. standpoint. That's what I was. That's what well, I was yeah, going he, at. Without so the leadership, uh, yeah. it's just all momentum. It's economic momentum. I, yeah, I, 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 tell, uh, I tell you what, our political elections have become like a reality TV show. I tell you what, it's it's like, I, you know, I, I go go watch my daughter play with her friends, and you know, when they get nasty. They act better than these two yahoos that are running for political office. It's 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 the most comical thing in the world. I, I think you have to look at it as entertainment, right? I mean, you can watch yeah. them or you can watch the Kardashians. It's all the same thing. The Real Housewives of Orange, whatever. I I digress. But but uh, so sort of cycling back around. I'm going to get us out of this, Kenny, because I can tell you're going. Oh my gosh, we got to get out of this. Uh, the other thing that I think Johnson has, has realized and is, you know, a trend that we've been talking about, Kenny, is the race to the small space. So real quick, uh, for our audience who might not know, talk about the race to the small space and talk about Johnson's entry. 
Oh, that's really good stuff there. Uh, now we're back on track. Uh, and the reason why is that uh, we have seen a consistency here in trends. We picked it up two years ago. And I think you coined the race to the small space. Uh, yeah, you did, mon- buddy. You did. You, you're, 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 well, you're the man with the The reason why word. is because we saw it happening. It, it began with Mike Marston with his uh, his pyramid. We were in Paris. And he gave us the uh, – we were right behind the uh, – or we had in the background the Louvre and, and the pyramid, and that's Mike Marston's uh, symbol of, of where he wants to go to the market with EZIO, is everybody's fighting over that the top, the apex of the market, and the vertical integrations, and the really challenging uh, long sales cycle business where the majority of our business uh, potential is in the 80% underserved buildings that are the light commercial building solution, light commercial building market. Uh, you know, so you have different uh, you know terminologies of the solutions, but reality is, is that there's a, uh, and a need, there's an imperative to go after these smaller buildings. 25,000 feet, square feet, 5,000 square feet. And now we're seeing a plethora of products coming through with solutions. And Johnson released the Versus product line, which is intended for the LCBM, the light commercial building market, to provide remote monitoring and control as well as leveraging of the new IT technologies that are readily available. We're talking plug and play, configurable with a smart mobile phone, and uh, you're off and ready to go. And it's uh, so it provides you that. And it's, it already comes with analytics, already comes with the things you need to make it work. So there's none of the, uh, you know, we forgot this in, the, in, our, in our quote, we forgot this, and we're going to have to get some more money out of this. This thing's like out of the box, onto the application, into the single seat workstation, and you're, and you're functioning. And, uh, and we also got good, good news with the other folks that we went to visit, KMC and Siemens included. They've got product solutions now designed specifically to provide solutions for this new, not new market, but this all of a sudden trended market. Where right. It's well, it's, be- it's, be- it's become affordable now, Kenny. That's the thing. They've taken the technology, you know, that was only available for big buildings and Jace's. They're, they're driving that down. The re- reason they're able to do that is a couple reasons. One is they're using the cloud. The other thing, the internet of technology is sort of caught up that, you know, the, the economies of scales have gotten so much that it's very, very affordable to the fact that KMC, could, you, with their commander, you can even look at if you're a service contractor, giving that uh, 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 control system away for a five-year service agreement. So, so, so we're seeing that. Johnson is, is kind of interesting because, Ke- you know, we saw Kevin Fascinelli and Dyke and Kevin. I mean, we saw Kevin Fascinelli and Dyke and, you know, their whole thing with their plug-and-play thing was they put a lot of the smarts in the equipment, right? So then you could pretty much configure it with an iPad or whatever. And, you know, Johnson has taken a, a, a page out of Darth Vader's playbook there because a lot of their, their Varus's product, if you couple it with their York equipment, you get some extra benefits there. In other words, it's a little bit easier to get the data because it's sort of embedded into the equipment and set up in a way that it'll come right out on your iPad. So I think Johnson's got that going on with that Varus's product. It's a cool product. We're looking forward to working with that. And uh, so it was cool stuff there. And, and, you know, it goes on and on and on. I mean, Johnson's product showcase, Kenny, as you can see from some of the videos that we put up, is is spectacular, mainly because they have so many different brands, right? So you go to that product showcase and it's like just unbelievable, huh? Well, sure. uh, You were saying about the the synergies and the integration. Uh, We saw it with Acuity first. We got a good in-depth presentation on DisTech, uh, Acuity, and – DG Logics and how that was going to produce an incredibly new synergistic, uh, you know, solution for buildings. And then we saw, uh, like Johnson, uh, they have six business units. They have Chillers, VFR, Ductlist, UPG, Ducted PX, Air Systems. Uh, they have the controls, building controls, and then the aftermarket business. But they really are putting together that synergistic thing where their controls. We're going to see a lot of them on the OEM. There's going to be a lot. Of, uh, aftermarket business in the future, but they're making them, they're ensuring compatibility and single efficiencies. There's nothing that there where you got to go through gateways. I mean, this stuff is up and running and, and it's done with a design purpose. It's intended. There's a cool thing that Jenny Stent said is none of this is accidental or this is well thought out. This is uh, where they work together as a team with these six business units to start to get those synergies across. All the way, she she made a statement saying that, you know, you've got an integrated car, I mean, so why can't you get an integrated building? And the next solution that they're going to be integrating with, no doubt, is going to be Tyco and all the all the increased value that that will bring to the existing Johnson Controls value proposition. No, absolutely, Kenny. Absolutely. So JCI rocked and rolled, Kenny, and a great conference, over 700 people there, great hospitality. I think they do them every two years. Encourage you, if you miss this one, to get to the next one. Uh, Johnson's on the move. They're doing some great, great stuff. And uh, um And then I went on from there to Chicago to KMC's conference. And I'll tell you what, Kenny, we stay at the Langham Hotel, 
downtown Chicago. These rooms go for eight or nine hundred dollars a night regularly. KMC had negotiated just a super, super low rate. This was by far and away, Kenny, the nicest hotel I've ever stayed at. I almost didn't come home. I was just kind of wanted to hide out there and just stay there. So, you know, the room was spectacular. It's almost as big as my house. It was actually, it used to be the IBM building. It's one of the most famous architectural design buildings uh, in Chicago at the time. It's right next door to, you know, we've all seen the building. It's got the parking lot with the circles that go around and the condos, the two side-by-sides. The guy that designed it was a guy named Mies, who's designed, I guess, a ton of the buildings in Chicago. So it's a very, very famous building. Langham's moved in there. And uh, sort of put it in perspective, the first night, you know, there's not a knock on your door. There's a little ring. There's a doorbell. And all, and all the stuff is digital, so you touch things to turn the lights on or whatever. And I open the door, and the, the nice lady's there, you know, asking if I want turn down service, right? And I go, no, no, it's all good. But if you have one of those little chocolates, uh, I'd love one of those. She goes, oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I don't have a chocolate. Well, I said, no big deal. It's not a big deal. And, you know, went back to whatever I was doing. And about 10 minutes later, there's another ring on the door. And all of a sudden, she shows up and she's got three, I mean, exotic Swiss candy bars. I mean, big ass candy bars, right? <laughs> They're wrapped in a ribbon and she presents them to me, right? So it's like, it was that level of service, right? That, that, that at the hotel. So I think that set an expectation. And, you know, we know Richard Newberry, the CEO of um, KMC, and I don't think anything happens by accident with Richard Newberry. We'll talk a lot about him uh, as we go on. But but so you're in this uh, just top notch hotel with great service. You with KMC, who is a company that provides great customer support, great service and great products. And they had fantastic speakers. Uh, You can, you know, see the videos. We, We did a highlight called the KMC Genius Conference Highlights. You can see that on, um, on Control Trends. Encourage you to check that out. I tried to get some snippets from the speakers and some of the key points they were making. But Kenny, I tell you what, it was, it, it, it was absolutely spectacular. So here is, uh, and, and their sub-theme was Command Your Future because it was all around Commander. Okay, their race to the small space product. And again, the thing with that is it's open, it's scalable, it's affordable. Okay, so, so that's their product. But here's the new trend, Kenny. We heard this over and over and over at KMC. You know, we've heard of software as a service, right? Jeff Haupt from AI was the first guy that sort of turned us on to this reoccurring revenue, right? So, so what they were talking to us over and over about is having that monthly revenue coming in. They're saying we're in a society where we no longer want to buy things. We want to lease them for just as long as we're going to use them, right? And, and I can speak to that because the software that I used to do the editing is called Adobe. You cannot buy Adobe anymore. It's a monthly fee. You get all the updates. You get everything else. It's a compelling business case, Kenny. I think we're going to see and hear more and more about, and I, I called it on one of the videos, we'll call it controls as a service. But how do you get that reoccurring revenue? Uh, KMC is postulating with their products and what they've got going on. Uh and the price points that controls and reoccurring revenue is going to be the next big thing we're going to see in our industry in terms of how business is done. Well, you mentioned earlier uh, that one day we might lease uh, controls and control systems so that there's no, uh, it's not a, it's not a capital expense anymore. Uh, it's, it's a provided solution. And, and that would certainly lend uh, to what you're saying right there. But I think what's happening is we're seeing less and less products are going to be available uh, to, to the business uh, that used to be all about manufacturing and replacing parts. And, and uh, the, the, the more the merrier. Uh, and then when you included security, that was just another, you know, uh, Laundry list of parts that could uh, you know be serviced and then replaced. You know, so there was a lot of you know in and out of parts. Well, we're seeing that less and less. A lot of this things that used to be local controls or whatever are, are going into supervisory controls, and supervisory controls are becoming edge controls. And edge controls don't need as much uh, you know size, and 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 they're relying on the cloud for for the long term uh, analysis, short term analysis they can make right there. So what we're seeing is that the 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 hierarchy that used to take you through. S- 
say four or five levels of controllers and, and field devices are now being shrunk by two, maybe three, so that you're going from this very powerful edge device that serves as a, a local controller, field device, and a supervisory controller, and then from there it goes up into the uh, cloud for, for the heavy-duty processing. So uh, we need to, to fill that vacuum with something else, and that could be that what you're saying, that the, that the controls as a, as a service, and that service does what uh, you know, still, it's not magic. You need somebody that's going to caretake the equipment, and know the uh, you know, be able to support what the diagnostics tells you. You know, somebody has to go out there and be able to turn a wrench. But they also uh, need to understand that the, the way the business model is changing is almost uh, you're going to pay for the software side of it. You're going to pay for the upgrades, the constant need to improve the software. Uh, and, and the integration process that requires, you know, security concerns and whatever. So that's going to be a, a ongoing, never-ending, uh, you know, cost, but it's being reduced. So you get the, you know, economy of scale. So I think you're right. I think we're, we're at the beginning of it. And we're going to start selling it real here, real soon. Well, Niagara sort of started it, right, where you've got the licensing agreement and all that. And, 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 and I think that you almost have to do that because you're going to constantly – improve the product you know software industry is big on that because you know you, you got to pay for these upgrades and you got to keep up i mean if nothing else with just the security issues right so but but could it be kenny and a couple of the speakers were saying that you know 80 percent of their revenue is reoccurring revenue right and they like it that way because at the first of the month they know exactly how much they have coming in and so so they're selling that those agreements so could it be the you know, part of that is as we talk about this all the time, the products are all great. It's very difficult to differentiate your product, right? I mean, you can still do it some, but as soon as you do it, other people catch up, and now it's it, it, it's a me too. We've talked about you know the need that the, the person has the right messaging wins, right? We've talked about marketing being uh, absolutely critical now, and salespeople being more critical than ever, and how you get position in the brand and so on and so forth. But could it be that the next big thing here is, how the product is bought. And you mentioned cap, CapEx versus operational expenses, and I'm not an accountant, but from what I understand, if you do CapEx, you've got to, you know, you've got to report it, it becomes a liability, a depreciation, depreciating asset and all that kind of stuff. If you are leasing it, it goes in the operational budget. <clears throat> it does a lot of things for the accounting and the financial people that buying stuff can't do. So I am wondering if, you know, how the product gets bought or purchased might not become the next big differentiator. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting, but uh, we're seeing the origins of it. We're seeing the, uh, the first foundations, the first players, and we're seeing how to do it. And like you said, uh, you always have that, that uh, the chasm to cross. You'll have the early adopters. You'll have the people that really do pave the roads and basically help uh, educate the market. And then there's going to be the me too easies that come in and uh, because people don't jump, uh, it's just not possible. A lot of people in their career wise, they're, they're in the sweet spot. <laughs> Excuse me. They have, uh, they've got maybe like, you know, five to 10 years of professional career left and they don't want to take on, uh, you know, something that's going to disrupt, you know, the entire operations and challenge them to the point where they, they, they could be making, you know, mistakes that, you know, they don't want to make, but they're forced into it because they feel like they've got to respond to technology. Uh, Scott Cochran said something a while back that I think still was toe to toe. So every time we see this leading thought process with leading technology, introducing all these options and all these new, uh, you know, ways of business, you still got, you know, the the drag on there is going to be that, you know, if it's not practical, it doesn't do it. So you, you're going to have a large uh, playing field where you got to fit somewhere in there. In other words, don't drop your business today because you think this is going to be the next big trend, but certainly be aware of it and work with the manufacturers and the, and the vendor providers that are giving you that access, that are educating you while they're transitioning you through this IoT thing. Like Ken St. Clair said, you know, worst case scenario is that our business becomes – uh, so dominated by these new intelligent whiz kids that that can do everything from a from a laptop that used to be done physically because they can they can monitor they can evaluate they have cameras assist so you've got all this new smart technology but the reality is that you're still working with equipment and it still has to work with different generations of equipment we uh, we saw a large project we had an emergency uh, over the last. Uh, at the beginning of the week where uh, the system had worked flawlessly for, since 1992, 1993 it was completed. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, it's, it's done. It's, it's, it gave its last hurrah. And the choices that you can take uh, in that kind of a situation using new technology is just absolutely amazing. You know, so uh, still, uh, you know, there's, there's just a lot of potential. And I think that, that coupled with the economic forecast that we got, Eric, is that some of the, the doom uh, 
midday type of, uh, you know, con- you know, end of the day, we'd say, man, we don't have a chance here or anything. I think what we got to do is just keep moving that sweet spot, keep moving around, attend these uh, things that we're doing here, and then come, you know, kind of exfiltrate your solution. You know, f- take some from here, some from here, some from here, generate uh, a new, uh, you know, your new solution as, as, as a contractor and as a, distri- a distributor. That's a good segue into our next um uh, Part of the control talk now, uh, which is a national sales meeting, is that the skills that you have, uh, and, and I think you're a believer of it too, you have to constantly hone your skills. You have to constantly stay uh, knowledgeable, but you have to really understand the trends. You have to understand that whoever's holding the customer's hand at the end of the day wins. You have all these great solutions, and and like uh, you you know it, and I know it. You get, uh, everybody has a great controller. Everybody has a great support team. Everybody has great marketing. How, how do you differentiate your business? Well, people that like you continue to buy from you. So, yeah, I think it's a very, uh, you know, boost to, uh, you know, kind of a, a message that gets gets stale after a while. How to sell and, and, and be a good salesperson. You know, remember the days of Dale Carnegie and all the other uh, – Zig Ziglar, you know, you, just, you constantly try to, to energize the people that go out there and represent these these you know products and these vendors. And then, if all things are being even, uh, like you said, if somebody can find a way to be personable, make a good impression, and be sincere and demonstrate a passion for their their, their stuff that they're doing, well, they're, they're the ones that win. So because uh, well, it, it's, it's, it's not magic. Yeah, and you talk about that. Let's talk about Richard Newberry, the CEO of. Uh KMC a little bit. So I got a chance to spend some more time with Richard and you talk about just a dynamic guy. You and I had heard about him, Kenny, because he was the guy that went out and got Dell and Intel drug him, you know, got, got him to come in to uh, work with KMC to create the commander product. Right. So you got Dell and in- Intel inside. You'll see more about that. It makes it more secure. Uh, also gives him some, some other advantages, but the story we, we heard the story and Richard told it again, that the first time I guess Dell and Intel showed up at a real time Ibicon show, Richard Newberry, I mean, he didn't hesitate. He went and he said it took the whole meeting. He kept begging to be able to meet with these guys and, and they wouldn't meet with him. And finally, he heard that the guy he needed to meet was was in a room. He just went up, refused to be denied, went into the room, sat down to talk to these guys. He said he had to pretty much beg them to talk to him about, uh, about working with KMC. Those were his words. And by this time, you know, he didn't have any more business cards or anything. And it was just one of those things that, uh, you know, he, he, he was passionate about it. He believed in what KMC was doing. He saw the future. He had the vision of the future for, for that. We, they needed to partner with these guys. And, you know, we heard the story that, that Intel and Dell, I guess about a month later, you know, they, they call KMC and they said, well, you know, it was a guy with the glasses that, you know, dresses really nice. Like, oh, you mean Richard Newberry, but they, but they were at the KMC conference. I had a chance to interview and you can see it on, on the video, one of the Dell guys there. So, so the commander product, Kenny, sort of a couple of things. So that's leadership, persistence, passion, like you mentioned, and, and just not being denied. So he, he went for that. And this commander product, I tell you what, I think is going to be a platform that uh, you're going to see grow and grow and grow. They're starting with a, a, a sort of a bit of a simplistic version, if you will. So they've got the price point very, very low. It's a platform they'll be able to build on. And is, you're, there's going to be a software as a service update with that. So, so they're planning on, they want to get it into the marketplace as quickly as possible. They're focusing on those buildings that don't have anything. I think it's, now it's 5 million buildings. Uh, and they're going to grow with it. So the commander is available. So check with your local uh, KMC distributor or integrator to find out more about that. I think I'm and long-winded that, today, buddy. Well, you know what? Uh, it's okay. I, but the commander, just for clarification, that does not require uh, licensing. And in, in those, is it a software package with it, or is that uh, is that just out of the box and bring it up? And bring yeah, every, it on, every, on every, everything you need, in, including analytics, uh, cool. the programming. You don't no, no licensing available. They'll sell you uh, software updates if you want to. They highly recommend that because they're, they're going to, you know, the, the roadmap. They're going to continue to improve on it. So. Uh, it's good stuff, Kenny. Hi, Eric. Well, the next uh, the next major event that we went to right after that, you were in Chicago already, and I flew in from Pittsburgh, and then we got to go to the CPS, the Siemens CPS Business National Sales Meeting. Uh, we both were invited to speak uh, at, at certain parts during the uh, the breakout sessions, and they had, and it was again, I I thought it was an amazingly different version, but it had every bit of the intensity and passion. Uh, you know, the group of professionals that basically run 
the, the business side of Siemens uh, in the HVAC, uh, the talent side. Uh, they also had some other divisions there, but you know, we were pretty much uh, with the uh, group from Talon. Uh, but Siemens now, too, uh, has, has a bunch of young leaders that are really, really focused on engaging new markets and working with, with people that uh, they're making more of Siemens as a softer side of Siemens type of thing where uh, Siemens used to be a branch-only entity, a kind of a monolithic approach. If, you, if the Siemens branch got a project that was end of, end of story uh, and then you had to wait uh, for the next renewal periods or whatever or indefinitely, Siemens would hold on to their customers. So they, they, Siemens uh, kind of uh, you know, engaged the like commercial uh, and commercial uh Customers and users with their, you know, valve actuator assemblies and and their uh, direct coupled actuators. And of course, they had a, a very strong competitive, uh, you know, entries into both of those markets. But now we're seeing them come into the thermostat. They have the Ready 2000B, which is BACnet compatible. It probably is the most universal commercial stat in the market right now. There's not many applications they can't do. Whether it's, uh, you know, water source heat pump, uh, you know, rooftop units. Fan cool unit, it could do everything, and it has an onboard humidity sensor. So Siemens now has taken kind of a, you know, they've kind of deviated from the uh, standard uh, Siemens marketing uh, relationship with with distributors and users, and they've gone into a new world. Uh, what were your impressions? Uh, we'll go over the list of people that we met up with, but just your, your gut feelings. What did you think about Siemens? Well, I think I think Siemens. I mean, if you were a better, if you were a gambler. You know, they call betting on the come, somebody that's sort of unknown and getting ready to uh, just break out. I think, you know, when you when you go with Siemens, you're betting on the come. I mean, there was a, there was a commercial years ago, Kenny, you know, this is not your father's Oldsmobile. You remember that where Oldsmobile was changing their image up and, the, you know, they got the really cool cars. And I think this is not your father's Siemens. You got a lot of young executives. They get it. Uh, they, you know, Siemens is one of the largest control companies in the world. The only knock we had from a distribution side, you know, other than the one about it was very branch centric was they had this massive portfolio of products and we just got sort of a limited subset of them. You know, it was, it, the, the products were great. They were always great, but it was just kind of like as a distributor, how do you sort of position the brand in your customer's, uh, customer's mind? And so they're letting more and more, bringing more and more products through distribution. So I think, I think, you know, you're betting on the come with Siemens. They're, they're going to continue to do well. And, and, you know, I think it all starts with leadership. They got a lot of young leaders, but you had a chance to catch up with uh, the president of that division. So I've got, I've got a clip of that. So introduce him real quick and I'll play the clip. Good. I would like to introduce John M. Uh, Karzmarzik. He's the vice president, America's Control Products and Systems. And I'll tell you what, uh, this guy here, uh, you talk about leadership. Uh, it, it was just, it was cool to be involved in, in a meeting where uh, the hierarchy, there was so there's so much gelling going on. There was so much, uh, you know, there were people from the East Coast, West Coast, North, South. They've, they've re uh, Territorialized some of their markets and, and some how do they uh, how they call them customers, uh, and it was really neat to be part of that. Uh, like you said, the 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 new ventures that they're going into is economizers, uh, the ready thermostat, uh, the ready two thousand thermostat now in the commercial thermostat world, and of course they've always had a strong and re- a consistent presence in the VFDs, and now with the BT three hundred, some of the uh, features that differentiate that va- VFD from the other VFDs is making it a real eye catcher. And like we said about the light commercial building solution, uh, Siemens has what they call the total room automation. And that's where they integrate uh, heating, the HVAC, uh, I'm sorry, HVAC, lighting, and shading. The shading is a principle uh, or concept that comes out of uh, Europe uh, mostly. Uh, where When I lived in Europe, it was the first time I, I was exposed to an incredible uh, – emphasis on shading with the roulade that they put down at the end of the night uh, it totally shuts out blackens the room immediate sleep so i remember I was in the air force and i couldn't come off i'd come off a midnight shift and you couldn't go home and sleep because you couldn't get the curtains uh, you know tight enough and, and seal out the light well not in germany you put down these lights uh, these roulade and things that's shading it blackens the room no light so they uh, automated that so, you know, typically a house in, in Germany, uh, a newer house certainly, uh, the shades are t- put on a timer. Just like the lights go out, the shades come up. So every morning the shades automatically come up and, and, and they have a whole different concept because they totally maximize the efficiency of that lighting. So as the shades uh, have an opportunity to bring in more of the outside lighting, uh, they turn the inner lighting down unless it's a problem or a better HVAC gain where – because the summer uh, heat's coming in through that light and it's going to cause the air conditioning to come on. The cooling's more expensive than, than the benefit of the free lighting. So it, 
figures all this stuff out for you. So this is going to be a big play down there uh, in the hospitality suites, uh, you know, in dormitories, in office commercial buildings where the more of this you can automate it and put it into certain you know, uh, rules uh, of, of operation and sequence of operations, that you can just rely on your building system being totally automated into one of the most efficient you know, uh, scenarios possible. Cool. Well, all right, here, here's Kenny talking to John Karsmarzik. Hi, this is Ken Smarz with Control Trends. I'm with John Karsmarzik, Vice President of Products and Control Systems Americas. Siemens is a, a global corporation, uh, one of the most recognized brands in the world. So tell us about what, uh, how Siemens, what they're doing in Americas. Okay, so when we talk about Siemens in Americas, we're probably talking about control products and systems, part of building technologies, my organization. What we're trying to do is we're trying to become more engaging, trying to be more open, easier to work with from an overall standpoint. Awesome. And uh, there's a lot of new products being introduced at this meeting. Too. We, we are. We're introducing a lot of products. Uh, we're spending a lot of time. Uh, and we're also opening up more and more of these products to, to more people. We, we're really trying to open up our go-to-market and trying to be more effective in the way we, we the way we do this. Okay, John, for our control trends community that might not be engaged in working with Siemens now, what, what can they expect if they, uh, they get Siemens as a partner? Well, obviously, we have a huge investment from an R&D standpoint. We're continuous, continuously bringing out new products. We're known as an innovative company. When you're talking about my organization, Control Products and Systems here in the United States, you're going to find you're dealing with an open, honest, and engaging organization that's looking to do business. Well, that's awesome, John. Uh, great stuff, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Well, that was cool stuff, Kenny. I mean, Siemens on the move looks like uh, he might be... Uh on the nomination ballot for the uh, Control Trends Executive of the Year. Cool, cool guy. And uh, speaking of that, Kenny, let's transition a little bit. Uh, what you can look for this week, the nomination ballots will be coming out for the 2016 Control Trends Awards. And uh, those will be up and available till probably about the end of November, 1st of December. The top five or six in each category will go on to the finals. And we will have another voting process for that. So the nomination ballot's pretty easy. We just need your email address for two reasons. We won't send you anything, but just to make sure your vote's legitimate. Uh, believe it or not, we have had folks in the past that have tried to uh, stuff the ballot box. We know who you are. You're not going to get to do it again. And, um, um, and then on the ballot, you'll also see that there's a place you can write in up to three uh, other names or products or whatever. Okay, so that's how we that's how we sort of uh, fan it out and learn about new products and people and companies. So, so if you don't see the person or the company or the product you want to vote for on the nomination ballot, just write them in. Once they get two votes, they'll automatically go on the, the ballot. Kenny and I will keep updating the ballot. Uh, we'll we'll check it every other day and update it. So that list will grow a lot longer as as time goes on. Right, Kenny. Yeah, Eric, it's, uh, it's good stuff, and, and it's just, again, it's how we recognize all the superstars and heroes and the people behind the scenes doing all this incredible work, and making all this, uh, making our planet greener. I mean, it, it all starts with uh, some some person somewhere is doing a great job with a great product and a great solution, and this is the opportunity to get them on this uh, nomination ballot so that they have a chance to win one of the Control Trends Awards. Yeah, absolutely, Kenny. And speaking of awards, we got a couple of new categories this year. Uh, one of them is going to be the most impactful video. OK, uh, you know, you think about we really are becoming a video society. I mean, YouTube is probably the number one teacher out there. Control Trends is obviously big on video. So this just makes a lot of sense. So when you write that in, you know, probably write down the uh, we got to figure that out where you can send the link in or whatever. Uh, but but write down the video and then maybe put the link. We'll figure that out. But that's that's a new product, a new new category. The second one, Kenny, we're thrilled about this. As you know, we're on a mission to attract younger people into our industry and also on a mission to attract more women into our industry. So for the first time ever, we are going to have the Control Trends Woman of the Year. So if you know, and they don't necessarily have to be an executive. They could be somebody just rocks and rolls. And I give you a great example, Kenny. Uh, Siemens has one of their one of their outstanding salespeople, a woman by the name of Ruth Hershey. And to give you an example, sort of what the women of the year might look like, I had a chance to catch up with Ruth, so check this clip out. Here with Ruth Hershey from Siemens at the Siemens uh, partner meeting. And uh, Ruth, everybody talks to me and says, if you want to know how to be successful in this industry, go talk to Ruth. She's been doing it for 18 years. 18 years. How'd you get in the business? Oh, I worked for Omron Electronics, and then I uh, knew somebody that worked at Siemens in the purchasing group, and he got me over here, and I worked for OEM for three years, and then I went over to our CPS channel, and uh, selling uh, valves and actuators, sensors, thermostats, and some building automation for 18 years. 
awesome. So I take it you like it? Oh, I love it. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, there's some other women in the industry too, but I, I just, I think it's, uh, you know, a little bit of competition with the guys and, and I, I have a lot of fun. Well, so let me ask you a question. So we have a problem in this industry. We do not have enough people to do the jobs that are needed. And specifically, we are trying to attract more women to the industry. Because Speaking to women out there who might be considering coming into this industry, what would you tell them about the industry? Well, women are excellent salespeople, and we have a lot of empathy, so we really listen, and uh, we have follow-up. We feel guilty if we don't get back to someone right away. So uh, I'm just take charge, help people. You know, we have that inner uh, feeling to help people out as much as possible whenever they have a problem or an issue. And um, get as technical as possible. I really dug into all the technical things so I look smarter than the guys yeah yeah mm -hmm. so you know it's kind of cool because other people are trying to attract younger people in the industry too mm -hmm. and I can tell you're definitely like a millennial right or oh no, no no but anyway <laughs> definitely millennial yeah, 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 <laughs> okay yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. so um, so you know I what Kenny and I are fond of saying is this is the only industry if you really want to have an impact mm -hmm. on our planet mm -hmm. climate change global warming and all this is the one industry you can step right in and do it Would absolutely you agree? I, absolutely because because it's, uh, you know, humidity, temperature, uh, you can control it, smart thermostats, residential, commercial, industrial, everybody cares about uh, using the right products. Uh, you do it at home, you, people want to do it at work, so it makes sense. So let's think about this. We don't need any more lawyers, so all you young people, don't do that, you're yeah. not helping at all. But if you control the environment, right, make the environment mm -hmm. better, save energy, we don't even need that many doctors, right? It just takes care exactly. of everything. Yes. So, so it all comes down to us and you young people mm -hmm. changing the way we do things. Yes, right? yes. And it's fun and it's challenging and there's never a dull moment. I feel like I was here two years and it's 18, so it's really great. Nice, nice, yes. nice, nice. What's the biggest challenge you found in the industry? The biggest challenge I feel is um, everything's changing so fast. You have the uh, building owners wanting different things. You have the building, the, the needs of the building, and then, like you said, the uh, saving energy and things like that. So you got to really stay on your toes. You got to make sure your company, you got to tell the product managers and the people that you work for, hey, this is what people are looking for. And then, uh, and once you do come out with these new products, you got to keep on uh, with the technology and um, keep up with the competition and with the the very fast changing needs of the customers. So Ruth, what you're telling me, man, is there's never a dull moment, huh? Not a, not at all. Yeah. yeah, I'm just on the go all the time. Uh, but it's it, it's fun. It's fast and it's challenging. I don't feel bored like if I was in accounting or finance or something like that. So it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it is for sure. So uh, what advice would you give young people that are thinking about coming in this industry? I would say HVAC and building automation. It's uh, merging, I, I think, with IT. It's very technical. It's fun. If you're going to school for coding or, or some kind of technical thing, this is very technical. It's not pneumatics anymore. It's not boring. It's not the plumber, uh, the boiler Bob with his butt crack uh, showing. <laughs> it's it's very um, it's really exciting. It's 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 fun, challenging, and and uh, it's it's very modern. Yes, it's a never modern, yeah. very modern industry. And I think it's we're at our we're we're just starting with the excitement in this industry. Well, I, th I think we are. You're not stuck in some cubicle farm someplace. Yeah. You get to get out. You get yes. to do new stuff, different stuff. Right. What's, what's Siemens like for as a company? work for oh it's, it's fantastic yeah I mean we're always getting new products and and uh, our products are fantastic so it's it's very when I go out there I'm very confident because I know that the products not gonna fail I know I, we can deliver on time so I, I know I can go out there and um, show people uh, the product and be very proud of it and so it's uh, that's what I like it's awesome. yeah so hey uh, Ruth yes. version yes Girl power. oh yes I could just say uh, Ruth does a great job and, and you can see the competency level there's there's no loss in, in, in abilities there and she's proud of the fact that she's successful and she had her choice of the litter she could have gotten into building automation and she could have gotten into OEM and she picked the, the the job she has now because it gives her the greatest accessibility and she really has a passion loves what she's doing and we need that to go into uh, you know at, at just every level possible we need uh, everybody the acceptability the uh, the the mechanical engineers we have we need to get them into the HVAC world and we need to capture more of that young talent before they go into computers and ITs and actuaries or whatever. We need them in our business to sustain it. Well, Kenny, guess what? If it wasn't for women, you know how we would program computers now? 
we will be um, we will be plugging in the wires in the switchboard because that's how we did it before Grace Hopper and some of the women in World War II figured out how to write programs. So the the hardware was always the thing that the guys did. We were totally fixated on the hardware, and it was if it wasn't for women, we would not have advanced. So the women were the first programmers. They figured programming out. As a matter of fact, Ada Lovelace, Lord Byron's daughter. Way back in the day, man, when she was just some hot babe with a mathematical bent, wrote a treatise on what a computer was going to be. She figured out what a computer was going to be before anybody had any conception of what a computer was going to be. As a matter of fact, she wrote out some of the first sequences that led to some of the first computer programs. So we owe, building automation owes a huge debt to women because without women, we'd still be wiring stuff up. So there you have it, buddy. Anything else you have before we uh, sort of wrap it up? Well, two, two real quickies. Uh, we want to say a uh, shout out to fearless Phil Zito, who's getting uh, his book uh, is maturing to the point where he's got, uh, he says it's up over 400 pages, but we talk uh, with Phil and he did a, 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 you know, an outstanding job, uh, you know, recognizing some of the things we're doing. He's like a Ken St. Clair, you know, we all catch up with St. Ken St. Clair, by the way, we got uh, an October, uh, edition that we didn't get a chance to get Ken's thoughts on. Uh, but Phil's just a hard and dedicated author of a prodigious, uh, labor of love that he thinks is going to change the industry. Uh, Phil's got a great story. He went from being, uh, <laughs> he, went, he has a little introduction about, here's my story. I lived, uh, th he lived through the summer, uh, 2000 nightmare where he, uh, set in, uh, he was, Working, lost his job six months after leaving the military. He went from a stable job with a one-year-old child, and he went from being unemployed to being uh, a building automation expert. And we recommend you or we think that Building Automation Monthly is a great site to visit, sign up, and get a hold of this book because it can only benefit you. No, absolutely cool. And then also you will notice a post we had this week. Phil is now taken to critiquing control talk now the smart buildings video cast and podcast he critiqued episode 200 which was probably not the best episode because we were obviously in celebration mode but you can check that out phil also has an awesome podcast which we will be hosting on control trends the control trends podcasting network so be sure to go over and check that out as well so with that kenny smyers baby we're not going any place this week man we get back to business as usual right right but i do have one more if you don't mind i, I got one more plug what you got? Okay. Well, I got, uh, I got the, uh, I have, uh, you know, we, we sell, uh, Viconics and Schneider Electric and, uh, I had the fortunate, uh, opportunity to try out this wiser air thermostat and, uh, let me get the English version here, but this is, you know, the, basically the guide. And I took out my, my white Rogers thermostat that, uh, was here when I got here, you know, basically, uh, one stage heat, one stage cool. And I went through the, uh, the, the, they have a, a, a YouTube installation thing, and it's all basic stuff. You, before you take out your old stuff, you mark it properly. And then right now, uh, I have a phone app, you know, just like you'd expect. Uh, you just download the app, you hit it, and then you can control your temperatures, you know, up, down. Uh, we'll get a little more heat in here, let's say. I'll get my wife's attention. But it gives you uh, – it tells me that I save 30% uh, energy, echo Echo IQ is learning from the living room to start the heating, but it gave me a nice little summary of how I was saving impressive savings from October 14th. Over the past several days, Echo IQ has reduced Wiser Air's energy usage by 31%. So we talked about the rest of this, the small space. I just wanted to get in there uh, how we're going to see a variation on the race of the small space. Instead of just being a commercial thermostat specific, it's going to be a solution. Uh, and some of the uh, latest reviews on the rundown of who's got the best, uh, smartest thermostat out there. You have Nest again. You have Echo B3. You have Honeywell with two of them, Wi-Fi, Redlink, and Lyric. You have Ventstar, Emerson Sensor, uh, Sensi Wi-Fi. And, and we will continue to upgrade the information on that and update people. But that's going to be an interesting thing to see who wins the small solution or the race the to the space. No, solution. the thermostat wars, Kenny. It's the thermostat wars, the race to the small space, the thermostat. We're going to call it the thermostat wars, okay? You like that? Yeah, yeah okay. I mean, when, when, like we write, when we write the history of the controls industry, when you write your, your tome on the history of the controls industry, you'll, talk, you'll have a chapter called the thermostat wars. Well, it's, uh, it's a good word to have because I tell you what, the incredible IoT uh, technology that they put into these thermostats now, I just, I, I'm, 
I'm excited that it, could, you know, it keeps getting better, and now we're going to integrate it into our uh, – we're going to get that uh, next thing with Samsung. Uh, well, with no, system here. no, I tell you what. If, if you want to get blown away, I went to the Apple store yesterday. They got a whole wall full of stuff that you can hook up in your home. It's unbelievable from smart locks to – just go to the Apple store. If you want, if you want to know who's going to who's, – who's, who's your biggest threat is a smart buildings or a smart uh, homes distributor is the Apple store. Fantastic. So, all right, Kenny Smyers, buddy, we got to get off of it here, man, because we've been talking a lot. And uh, if we're going to get to episode 300, we can't go on for two hours again. <laughs> all well, right. Okay. Just uh, summarizing, too. Don't forget to get to the website. Go to Control Trends because we got some great posts that we couldn't cover here. But you got the Johnson coverage entirely. You got Project Haystack organization announces the new members in Haystack Connect 2017 conference reminder. And they're looking for sponsors. So get involved. ACI Brands Casbon does an interface device webinar on 1020. Six, and we have Sierra Monitor Corporation, Backnet Survival Kit, a great post, and of course the highlights from the KMC Genius Conference. You know what, so Kenny, you just shot us in the foot with that one. You know why? Because you just covered everything on the website in like 48 seconds. So people are probably going to wonder why the hell does it take them over an hour every week when Kenny can do it in 48 seconds? Eric must be the problem there. So, <laughs> all right, big well, dog, man. Another great week on Control Talk. We really appreciate uh, our audience out there. Again, a special thanks to everybody that came up and spoke to us at the conference we were at. We really, really appreciate you. So with that, we'll be back next week for episode 202. But for this week, be bold and stay in control. Indeed, Eric. There we go, buddy. Let's hope we never turn the report on. Let me take a look. <laughs> <laughs>